Hey everyone, it's Pacific, one of the creators of the SCP Archives. Before we get started, I just want to take a quick moment to thank our patrons, Cody Emmer, Brian Brylow, Namiris93, and Justice Pert. Your contributions mean the world to us, and you make this show possible. Thank you so much. If you're interested in hearing your name at the top of the show, or in getting ad-free and bonus episodes, find us at patreon.com slash scp underscore pod. And now, without further ado, episode one. Warning, the Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. Item number. SCP-087. Object Class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-087 is located on the campus of... The doorway leading to SCP-087 is constructed of reinforced steel with an electro-release lock mechanism. It has been disguised to resemble a janitorial closet consistent with the design of the building. The lock mechanism on the doorknob will not release unless volts are applied in conjunction with the counterclockwise rotation of the key. The inside of the door is lined with 6 centimeters of industrial foam padding. Due to the results of the final exploration, See document 087-4. No personnel are permitted access to SCP-087. Description. SCP-087 is an unlit platform staircase. Stairs descend on a 38 degree angle for 13 steps before reaching a semicircular platform of approximately three meters in diameter. Descent directly rotates 180 degrees to each platform. The design of SCP-087 limits subjects to a visual range of approximately 1.5 flights. The light source is required for any subject exploring SCP-087 as there are no lighting fixtures or windows present. Lighting sources brighter than 75 watts have shown to be ineffective, as SCP-087 seems to absorb excess light. Subjects report and audio recordings confirm the distress vocalization from what is presumed to be a child between the ages of and The source of the distress calls is estimated to be located approximately 200 meters below the initial platform. However, any attempts to descend the staircase have failed to bring subjects closer to the source. The depth of descent, calculated from Exploration 4, the longest exploration, is shown to be far beyond both the possible structure of both the building and geological surroundings. At this time, it is unknown if SCP-087 has an endpoint. SCP-087 has undergone four video recorded explorations by Class D personnel. Each subject conducting the exploration has encountered SCP-087-1, which appears as a face with no visible pupils, nostrils, or mouth. The nature of SCP-087-1 is entirely unclear, but it has been determined it is not the source of the pleading. Subjects exhibit feelings of intense paranoia and fear when faced with SCP-087-1, but it is undetermined whether said feelings are abnormal or simply natural reactions. Addendum Over a period of two weeks following Exploration 4, several members of the staff and students from the Campus report knocking at a variable rate of 1 to 2 seconds per knock, coming from the interior of SCP-087. The door leading to SCP-087 has been fitted with 6 centimeter thick industrial padding. All reports of knocking have ceased. Authorized personnel may refer to document 087-1 through 087-4 for transcripts of explorations 1 through 4. Document number 087-1 Exploration 1 D-8432 is a 43-year-old Caucasian male of average build and appearance and unremarkable psychological background. 
Class D designation is a result of demotion due to mishandling SCP D 8432 is equipped with a 75 watt flood lamp with battery power capable of lasting 24 hours, a handheld camcorder fitted with a transmission stream, and an audio headset for communication with Dr. at control. D 8432 steps through the doorway onto initial platform. Despite the wattage, the flood lamp only illuminates the first nine steps. The second platform is not visible. The first voice on the recording is that of D-8432. The second is Dr. It's fucking dark. Is your flood lamp functioning properly? D-8432 shines the light out the door and into the academic building's hallway. The light reaches significantly further. Yeah, it's working. It just won't light these stairs all the way down. Thank you. Please continue. D-8432 descends for 13 steps before reaching the second platform. The platform is in the shape of a semicircle with apparently concrete surface and walls. There are no distinct markings. Aside from nondescript patches of dust, dirt, or wear, consistent with that which is found in a typical concrete stairwell. D-8432 rotates 180 degrees to begin descent down the second flight, then pauses. Reason for stopping? You hear that? There's a fucking kid down here. Sounds like one. None of the described audio is feeding through the camera or mic at this time. Can you please describe the sound? It's... Young, either female or a very young boy. It's crying and sobbing and saying, Please help. Please. Yeah, it keeps repeating that and crying. Can you estimate its distance from your current location? Oh, fuck. I don't know. Maybe 200 meters down? Please continue down the next flight. The subject descends another 13 steps. As he reaches the landing, audio of the child is described as picked up. The child alternates between sobbing, wailing, and the words, please, help, and down here. The level of audio is consistent with D-8432's report of it being approximately 200 meters below. Can you still hear the crying? Yeah. We're picking it up as well. Please continue down. Stop if you notice any changes in the audio or environment. The subject descends another three flights of stairs before stopping. Keep going. Please. D-8432 continues another 17 flights, total of 22 flights, before stopping. There are no visual changes in the environment, and each flight has been a consistent 13 steps. I'm not getting any fucking closer to that kid. Stereo audio confirms that the crying noise has not increased in volume and remains approximately 200 meters below the subject. Noted. Please continue. The subject continues another 28 flights before stopping. 50 total. D-8432 is standing on the 51st landing, counting the initial ground level landing. D-8432 is estimated to be 200 meters below the initial platform. 34 minutes have elapsed. The volume of the crying has not increased. I feel a little uneasy. You've spent a long time in a dark, unknown stairwell. It's natural. Please continue. The subject hesitates before stepping down the next stair. As the subject moves forward, the flood lamp illuminates a face located approximately at the bottom of the flight. SCP-087-1. It appears to be the same size and shape as a human head, except as lacking a mouth, nostrils, and pupils. The face is completely motionless, but is making direct eye contact, indicating its awareness of D-8432. Fuck! What was that? Shit! Holy fucking shit! What the fuck? Can you please describe what you see? Some sort of fucking person face thing, and it's fucking looking right at me. Fuck! Fuck, fuck, it's looking right at me. Is it moving? 
Now it's just looking at me. Fuck. Fuck. Fuck, it's creepy. Please approach and further illuminate the entity. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I don't wanna fucking... The face jerks forward about 50 centimeters directly toward D-8432. Oh, fuck, 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 D-8432 enters a panicked state and rapidly ascends SCP-087. D-8432 reaches the ground floor in 18 minutes, at which time he collapses and passes out. There is no sign of SCP-087-1. Review of the footage indicates an equal number of flights and stops ascending as descending. Audio of the crying and pleading remains at the same volume until the last flight, at which point it ceases. Medical reports indicate collapse was a result of the rapid ascension of the stairs, causing fatigue. Document number 087-2, Exploration 2. D-9035 is a 28-year-old African-American male of strong build. Psychological background indicates no abnormalities except an extreme hatred for Subject has an extensive record of D-9035 is equipped with a 100 watt flood lamp with battery power capable of lasting 24 hours, a handheld camcorder fitted with a transmission stream, and an audio headset for communication with Dr. at control. D-9035 is also equipped with a backpack containing 100 small LED lights with adhesive backs and battery lives of approximately three weeks. Lights turn on and off by compressing them. D-9035 shines the flood lamp down the first flight of stairs. Despite the extra wattage, the light does not illuminate beyond the ninth step. Wait, you want me to go down there, Doc? Please shine your flood lamp outside of SCP-087 to verify it's functioning properly. D-9035 shines the light into the hallway. Comparison with the footage from Exploration 1 confirms it is indeed brighter. Thank you. Please continue to the first landing. Hey Doc, I, I know what you said and all, but I don't think I want to go down there. Please continue to the first landing. Doc, look, I... As per our earlier conversation, please continue to the first landing. D-9035 pauses for 18 seconds, then descends 13 steps to the first landing and stops. Is that a kid? Please remove one of the adhesive lights and affix it to the wall on the landing. Doc, you hear that? Yo, yo, is that a kid down there? That's unconfirmed. Please affix one of the adhesive lights to the wall and verify it functions. D-9035 hesitates, then removes one of the lights from his backpack and adheres it to the wall. He presses on the light, and it turns on. Please turn off your flood lamp. D-9035 hesitates again before turning off the lamp. The LED light illuminates the landing, but does not extend beyond the first step either way. Thank you. You may turn your flood lamp back on. Uh, please continue to descend. At each landing, affix a lead light to the wall and turn it on. If you notice anything unusual, please report it. D-9035 turns the flood lamp back on and descends the next flight of stairs. As he sets foot on the landing, the audio picks up sounds of pleading and crying, consistent with those of the first exploration. Can you still hear the previously reported audio? Uh, yeah, she sounds about, um, 150, maybe 200 meters down. Am I supposed to get her? Look, Doc, I don't do well with kids. Please place the light and continue down until you notice anything unusual. The subject adheres the light to the wall and turns it on, then continues to the next landing. He adheres the third LED light to the wall and turns it on. D-9035 continues in this manner for the next 25 flights before stopping. I don't think I'm getting any closer to the kid, Doc. How far below would you estimate the sound to be? Same as before, 150 to 200 meters down. Thank you. Please proceed. D-9035 continues in the same fashion for the next 24 flights. At the 51st landing, he stops. Footage shows an arced gouge in the concrete wall, estimated to be approximately 50 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. 
The first step down from the landing appears to be completely smashed into rubble. You see that? Yes. Can you please describe what you see? Looks like something slashed the wall. And there's... And the step over here is all crumbled up and stuff. The slash mark looks really smooth. D-9035 touches the gouge mark. Yeah. Smooth. Feels like glass. Thank you. Please continue down. Uh, look, Doc, I, I think I've gone far enough, okay? Please continue as per our agreement. Look, I don't want to be doing this, agreement or not. D-9035 steps over the destroyed step and continues down the staircase. Nothing is notable at the next landing. D-9035 adheres an LED light to the wall and continues in the same fashion for another 38 flights. The sound of the crying and pleading still has not gotten closer. D-9035 is on the 89th landing, and 74 minutes have elapsed from the beginning of the exploration. Subject is estimated to be 350 meters below the initial platform. I just feel like the kids is trying to lure me down here, Doc. I, uh, man, I think it's time for me to just go... D-9035 stops talking and moving as the flood lamp illuminates SCP-087-1. The face is staring directly at D-9035. Again, indicating awareness of the subject's presence. Although SCP-087-1 appears to be unmoving, its location is 38 flights below the initial encounter in Exploration 1, indicating it is mobile. Is there a reason you stopped? D-9035's breathing grows labored. SCP-087-1 remains immobile for an additional 13 seconds. SCP-087-1 blinks. SCP-087-1 jerks forward until it is approximately 90 centimeters from D-9035. Subject turns and flees up the stairs. Please relax and calm down. We need a closer look at the face. Turn around. D-9035 ignores Doctor and continues rapid ascent. He continues to scream incomprehensibly. D-9035, can you hear me? Please, slow down. D-9035 is unresponsive and continues rapidly climbing the stairs. His screaming diminishes to babbling. After sending 72 flights, D-9035 collapses on the 17th landing. D-9035, can you hear me? D-9035 is unresponsive, but labored breathing can be heard through the audio feed. For the next 14 minutes, D-9035 is immobile. The visual feed is black, and audio picks up only the subject's breathing and the continuous pleading coming from below. After 14 minutes and 32 seconds of unchanging visual and audio feeds, the sound of a rapid heartbeat not consistent with a human heartbeat and a low crackling noise is heard. Seven seconds later, D-9035 gasps and arrives, continuing his ascent of the stairs rapidly and wordlessly. The heartbeat and cracking ceases, and nothing abnormal is detected on the visual feed. He remains unresponsive. D-9035 exits SCP-087 and sits on the floor outside of the entrance. D-9035 then enters a catatonic state, from which he has not yet recovered. Document number 087-3, Exploration 3. D-9884 is a 23-year-old female of average build and appearance. Psychological background indicates a history of depression. Subject has a minimal record of using excessive force to D-9884 is equipped with a 75-watt flood lamp with battery power capable of lasting 24 hours, a handheld camcorder fitted with a transmission stream, and an audio headset for communication with Dr. at control. D-9884 is also equipped with a backpack containing 3.75 liters of water, 15 nutrient bars, 
and one thermal blanket. D-9884 stands on the ground level landing of SCP-087. The flood lamp illuminates only the first nine steps. LED lights placed on the wall during the last exploration are not visible. Please descend the first flight and examine the landing wall. D-9884 descends 13 steps and stops at the landing. There is no trace of the LED light at the location footage from Exploration 2 indicates it was placed. Yeah, um, it's just a dirty concrete wall. There's like nothing on it. N no, wait, it, ooh, it's a little bit sticky right here. D-9884 indicates the spot on the wall the LED light should have been located. There's a child crying down there. She's, she's begging for help and crying. Thank you. Please continue down the steps until you notice anything unusual. D-9884 descends. Upon reaching the next landing, audio of the crying child consistent with the prior two explorations is picked up. No LED lights appear to be present on any of the landing walls. D-9884 continues with no incident until she reaches the 17th landing. Ew, there's something on the ground here and it smells really bad. It's all sticky and stuck on my shoe. Ugh, it's so gross. Video feed confirms presence of substance occupying a space approximately 50 centimeters in diameter. Can you describe the scent? Uh, it kind of smells like old rusty metal and pee. Thank you. Please continue until you notice anything else. D-9884 continues to the 51st landing without incident. The 51st landing remains unchanged from the previous expedition, and similar observations are made. D-9884 is asked again to descend until anything unusual is noticed. Subject continues her descent until the 89th landing is reached. The video feed jerks, and the subject yells. Ah, fuck! There's a hole in the ground, and I almost fell in. Video feed confirms the presence of a hole approximately one meter in diameter. The subject shines the floodlight down, revealing only blackness. Approximately four seconds pass, and the light of an indeterminate distance down the hole flicks on for approximately two seconds, and then back off. There was a light down there. It's gone now, but it was on for like a, a second. Did you see it? Yes. Can you estimate the depth of this hole? No way! It's too deep. At least a kilometer, like way more than a kilometer. Thank you. Can you still hear the sounds of the child? Uh-huh. She uh, still sounds far away. I, I don't feel like I'm getting any closer. It, it's like for every step I take, she takes one down. Please continue down until you encounter anything unusual. D-9884 continues to descend SCP-087 for approximately an hour, covering an additional 164 flights. She stops to rest at the 253rd landing, consuming one nutrient bar and several gulps of water. D-9884 is at an estimated 1.1 kilometers below the initial landing, yet the sound of the child has not changed in volume. After pausing for four minutes, D-9884 resumes her descent, making no stops for another 216 flights, 1.5 hours later. D-9884 is on the 469th landing, and approximately 1.8 kilometers below the ground level. I'm not getting anywhere. I think it's time I went back. I mean, going down is one thing, but this is a long climb back. You've been provided with food, water, and blankets to last you 24 hours. Please continue down. No, I think I'm going to go back up. D-9884 turns towards a previous flight of stairs. I... <coughs> SCP-087-1, the face, is directly behind D-9884, blocking her ascent. The face appears approximately 30 centimeters from the lens of the camera. Its eyes are fixed directly on the lens, this time looking not at the subject, but the person viewing the video feed. The video feed glitches and freezes for four seconds, accompanied by a static-like screeching noise from the audio feed. It then cuts the bumpy visuals of D-9884 descending the stairs rapidly. <laughs> This continues in a similar fashion until the end. No. 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 No.
D-9884 continues to scream and plead hysterically as she rapidly descends the staircase. The previously heard static-like screeching seems to overlay the audio feed, beneath which can still be heard the original sound of the crying child. Approximately 14 flights down, the video feed swings to show the area directly behind D-9884. The face is now approximately 20 centimeters from the camera lens. It is not staring at the subject. Rather, it is fixated on the camera lens, giving the illusion it is making eye contact with those viewing the footage. It is important to note that since the sighting of SCP-087-1, the sound of the girl crying and pleading has been increasing in volume, indicating B-9884 is nearing the source. After an approximate 150 panic flights of descent with three visual confirmations of SCP-087-1 still in pursuit, D-9884 trips and appears to fall unconscious. Audio feed indicates strong proximity to the source of the cry. The static and screeching noise continue. Video feed shows yet another descending flight of stairs, indicating D-9884 still has not reached the base of the stairwell. Twelve seconds of motionlessness pass before the face comes in full view of the camera, eye contact being made directly with the viewer. Audio and video feeds cut out and no connection is re-established. Document 087-4 Information redacted. In this episode, you heard the voice of Tanya Mileyovich as Dr. <laughs> Jesse Hall as D-8432, Josiah Peters as D-9035, Nicole Goodnight as D-9884, and John Grills is your narrator. Our music was composed by Tom Rory Parsons, and my name's Pacific. I'm your showrunner and sound designer. This is a Bloody Disgusting show. For more information, go to bloodydisgusting.com. And remember, secure, contain, protect.